Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today, we're gonna be making a sax. So I found out recently that I have a lot of Anglo-Saxon blood coursing through my veins uh, via an ancestry test. So today we're gonna be making a very common knife that was carried by the Anglo-Saxons, the sax. So sax stands for knife uh, in Old English. And this was a weapon or more so a tool that was carried around commonly uh, by, by the Saxons. And it was more like a utility tool. They would use it for uh, cooking, hunting. Uh, I don't think, I mean, I'm sure it was used in war, but I don't think that was his primary goal. It was carried by, uh, I'm looking at some Wikipedia stats on this. They say it was carried by both men and women commonly. And I think the Vikings also uh, stole this design at one point. So it kind of looks like uh, similar to a buoy in some ways, the way that the tip comes down like that. Uh, one of the major differences is that it seems like the saxes didn't have a guard. Uh, they had a very straight handle. Uh, we're adding a little bit of a twist here. I'm gonna, this is going to be an everyday carry style sax. Uh, so I have a little bit of curvature in the handle there. Uh, looking at the pictures of, of historical saxes, they have a lot straighter of a handle. Uh, they, and like I said, they don't have a guard, so it probably wasn't a thrusting type weapon when it was fought with. It was probably more of a slash. Uh, on the contrary, the, the Bowie knife has a big old guard on it, uh, which can stop your hand from moving up. So you see me here, I'm starting my grinding. I got my PPE on. Um, I also have on some sweet wireless headphones. I've, I've been using those a lot more, especially when taking video because I don't like having uh, copyrighted material playing in the background. And I can hear the, the music or a podcast or whatever way easier on the headphones over the grinder. So you see me here, I rough in my grinds with the bevel jig and a ceramic belt. And then right here, you can see me using a 120 grit J-Flex belt to get in those plunges. I think this is a good angle to kind of understand how I use the J-Flex belts hung over the side of the platen to make a radius plunge. You know, it's still a kind of a work in progress. I get better at this as I go. And sometimes you have to fiddle around with those plunges uh, to get them even. So preheat treat, I go ahead and I file in my Spanish notch or sharpening notch. This makes it way easier for me to sharpen the blades and it kind of gives you a starting spot so you don't gum up your plunge lines. I'm sorry, so you don't gum up your uh, uh, the bottom part of your plunge lines. So I get the forge started here. Uh, you can see I have my thermocouple in my muffle pipe there. Uh, I get the blade up to critical temperature, and actually I'm trying to get a little above critical temperature because I've read on blade forms that's what you're supposed to do. Get it up to around 1600 degrees Fahrenheit, and then I'm doing two normalizing cycles with this steel. Uh, in this case I'm using 1084, 3 16 of an inch stock. And then I get the blade up to just above critical, around 1500 degrees F, and quench it in 120 degree uh, canola oil. I get the oil up to 120 degrees by uh, by putting a, a little hot piece of metal in there uh, beforehand and then I check that temperature with a temp gun. So I verify with the file that I've gotten the edge uh, plenty sharp. And I, I take off some of the crud with a piece of sandpaper. And I strap this to a piece of angle iron because I like uh, for some reason I like having the edge pointed up in the air on my tempering oven. And then I put uh, the I put the blades as close to the thermocouple as I can. I'm going to be doing a video on how I modified this PID control toaster oven. I had like a second iteration uh, that's working out way better than my first. So yeah, while it's tempering, I, I start cleaning up the shop a little bit. You know, this is something that every knife maker can relate to unless you just have a big ass shop that you're able to keep everything out. Uh, I have a pretty compact space here, so uh, everything has its place. So I do two tempering cycles at 210 degrees Celsius, which is about 410 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, between cycles, I take it out, I cool it in water, and then I put it right back in. And this is another tip from the pros over there on blade swarms. Uh, you're not doing any damage by cooling it quickly to room temperature um, when you have a 400 degree 
blade, so you're not like requenching or anything, so don't worry about uh, rehardening or things of that nature. After the tempering, I come back over to the belt sander, uh, being very cognizant uh, to keep this blade nice and cool by dipping it in water. And that is, right there is a 120 grit finish that you just saw. I uh, work up to 120 grit finish on the J-Flex. Uh, this is a full flat grind all the way to the spine. And then I try to clean up the spine and uh, you know the, the bottom part of your handle here. And I try to get everything uh, to a fairly fine finish here. And I do some final straightening and things of that nature. Uh, you saw those um, those magnifiers that I had over my head there. Uh, that has made my life way easier on getting into some of these small spots. This is the etching machine we built in the last video. I'm going to be etching in DC power since I'll be stone washing this blade. Uh, no need to get the AC power going. So I hit it for about 12 hits here, one second apiece. And that gives me a nice deep etch. I then took it back over to the belt sander, hit it with a uh, cork belt to kind of knock off uh, some of the, uh, I guess, excess carbon from around my stencil, make it nice and clean. And then I acid etched the blade for about 12 minutes there. And I take a piece of steel wool to it, get some baking soda on it to neutralize the acid, and then put it into my new sweet tumbler. Actually, I think this was the last video, not my etching machine. Yeah, pretty cool little tumbler here. Uh, it allows me to get some other things ready in the shop uh, instead of sitting there shaking this thing. So I run this for about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, you can see I added some baffles to the inside of my tumbling uh, based off some suggestions I got on Instagram. And it does a pretty darn good job. I mean, I feel like I really like the finish that comes out. You know, the rocks, people keep asking me about the rocks, what kind of the rocks are they? They're nothing special. They're, they're literally from a decoration inside of our living room uh, that I stole. So just normal rocks and they work great. I'm sure tumbling media though would probably work a little better, maybe a little more aggressively. So I have some sweet ironwood from Pops Knife Supply here. Uh, I drill two number 13 holes for my Corby fasteners, quarter inch Corby fasteners. Uh, they have a 3 16 uh, shaft. I found that uh, number 13 is a little tighter so I drilled a 13s and then in the center I drilled a 1 8 of an inch hole that's going to be a 1 8 of an inch mosaic pin eventually and then mark out the profile of the handle get it cut out roughly go to the belt center and clean that rough cut out a little bit clean it up a little bit uh, and then I'll start working on the front of the handle scales I take these handle scales up to around a 220 grit finish on the belt sander and then I move on to hand sanding where I go uh, 320, 600, and in this case up to 1,000 grit. I then go and use my counterbore from Pops. This thing is awesome. I've talked about it before. I drill 3 16 into my quarter inch slabs. Now these are actually a little thicker. They're 0.27. So I, I do the math here on how uh, long my Corbys need to be inside head to inside head. So it works out to around a 0.36 inside diameter, I mean inside the inside uh, distance between the Corby heads and I like giving myself a little extra so I go down to a 0.4 and I guarantee that I'll be able to uh, tighten these up a little bit. Start mixing up some J-Flex epoxy. Check out the cards above. I did a, a pretty sweet test on the J-Flex versus BSI epoxy. This stuff is awesome. It, it, it literally has some flex to it and it's, it's a very strong bond. I've seen people put together knives with just J-Flex. Uh, so in this case, we're putting the Corby's on there and a mosaic pin just to make it even more. I, know, I guess the mosaic's more of a looks thing, but we're putting the Corby's on there to make this thing bulletproof. So I got those Corby fasteners uh, tightened up. I, I misspoke earlier. We're not using brass Corby's. We're using stainless in this, uh, in this build here. And then I uh, tap in my eighth of an inch pin in the center. And I clean these up pretty quick. Uh, try not to put too much alcohol in that joint because uh, it can affect the uh, epoxy on that joint there. So this is the next day. Gave it a full, ab about 20 hours to, to fully cure there. Well, my garage is running really hot nowadays. It's like 80 degrees, so they're curing a little faster. And now I'll start doing some handle shaping. You see me 
rocking the blade back and forth after I get it profiled. That's kind of rounding it over and then I, I come up to a 120 grit uh, scalloped one inch belt and eventually a 200 grit scalloped one inch belt. And then it's off to the hand sanding. I clamp the blade in there with two pieces of leather and I start with a 320 grit uh, rhino wet sandpaper. And this stuff's pretty good. It's good value too. I think you can get a whole pack of 50 for about 25 bucks from Pops. So I get the handle up to a thousand grit finish, and now I am debuting one of the, debuting sorry, debuting I'm debuting one of the uh, my new tools, the Win Wet Wheel Sharpener. Uh, this is like a direct replica of the Tormac uh, sharpener, but it works really good. It comes with a stone that they say is around 220 grit, and I have a, a makeshift laser here set up, so I have a guideline. Uh, not like you really need it on a flat knife like this. But not only does it have a wet wheel, but it has a power strop. And man, I tell you what, this is as sharp as I've ever gotten knives. And I wasn't the best sharpener before. So uh, it's pretty pretty nice to have a convenient system here. And I'm going to do a full review on this sharpening system in the coming weeks uh, with the pluses and minuses of this system. Uh, you know, spoiler alert, it doesn't handle drop point type knives as well. So you have to modify it to, to make it good for that. But this is how it turned out. I, I really like this blade. It's it's devastatingly sharp, uh, very pointy. Uh, it's a it's a very beefy construction with that three sixteenths of an inch uh, stock, and the ironwood handle just really pops. I, I later took some uh, some wax, some mother's wax, and went over this whole thing, and it made it pop even more. So I really like this knife, and uh, uh, appreciate you guys sticking around and watching the build. So. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button below and subscribe to the channel. I'll catch all of you guys, or y'all, on the flip side.